Hey everybody out there in Hot Rod Land, it's Phil coming to you once again from Carcraft Classics. Showing off some new inventory today. I have this beautiful 68 Mopar to show you, but before we get started with that, for those of you watching one of my videos for the first time, this is Carcraft Classics. We're located at 321 Canton Road. We're in Cumming, Georgia, about 30 miles directly north of Atlanta. Number for the shop is 470-239-4977. My name is Phil, I'm the owner here, and my cell number is 770-317-1415. We can also be reached via email at carcraftclassics at gmail.com. And be sure to visit us on the web at carcraftclassics.com. Now, if you're into the hot rods, the classic cars and trucks and wheel and tire packages we also sell and cool hot rod novelty items, and neon signs and things like that. If you're into that kind of thing, I'd really, really appreciate a thumbs up down below on the video. And uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube here. It's Carcraft Classics. So, we generally speaking uh, focus on more affordable cars, classic cars and trucks. You know, things, uh, vehicles priced in the fifteen dollars to $45,000 range. So that's prevented us from having too many Mopars over the past eight years. Um, just because a lot of them are priced well above that budget. But we've got one here that's more in that affordable range. So I'm excited to show you this vehicle. And if you have any questions, like I said, give me a holler, 770-317-1415. Yeah, Mopars have really, really, muscle cars in general over the past five years have just grown so much in value that uh, the average Joe, the average Jane uh, that we cater to here at Carcraft Classics, they become, you know, out of reach or unaffordable, so to speak. But uh, but the retail price on this vehicle is going to be fifty-seven five, so it's tough to find, you know, Mopars from this muscle car era that are, are in that affordable range so hopefully this one works for you and just let us know if you have questions now the satellite i did a little bit of research and it looks like they started production in 1964 for the 65 model year and for the first i guess three years they were on the b platform the b body platform for uh for chrysler and they were modeled at like a high-end Belvedere, uh, hence the name B-Body or B-Platform. So it was more marketed as a family car. They came in a two-door hardtop like this one. They came in also, they came in a four-door post car. And you could also get a convertible. But in 1968, with the onset of those muscle car wars amongst the three or four top manufacturers... Uh, they started going more in that direction for the Satellite, the Roadrunner. And uh, very, very similar cars. The Roadrunner was the lesser expensive one with not so many bells and whistles. But uh, the Satellite was positioned as Plymouth's lead uh, muscle car. And man, did they do a good job with, this, with the styling. Commonly referred to this body style as the Coke bottle style. Uh, just gorgeous. I just love the long body style on this, on the Dodges, uh, the Chevelles. I just love it. And I was born in 68, so I'm partial to this year for sure. This baby's been somewhat restored, partially restored, let's call it. They did a great job on the paint. The body is pin straight. Wheel and tire package is just dead on. And it's got a nice little prize under the hood I'm going to show you here in a minute. But, uh, but yeah, so I think, I think the satellite ran from 65 to 74, but this is easily one of the best years, best looking cars that they made. This thing is sweet. So anyway, let's take a look in the jewelry box. And before we get started with those details, I did decode the VIN number for you guys. I know Mopar aficionados will want to know. So the VIN number, the first digit was an R, which indicates the Belvedere line. 
H for satellite, 23, because it's a hard top, meaning it doesn't have a post in the middle of the windows there on the side. Uh, it is a hard top. You roll down the windows and the, uh, you know, the hole for both windows continues from front to back without a post in the middle. This car was born with a 318 cubic inch V8. As you'll see in a minute, it no longer has that. It is a 1968, and the last digit was a G, indicating that the car was built in St. Louis, Missouri. So we've got a little bit of history, and I've also got the Certi card inside. It wasn't out here in the engine bay, as we've seen in the past. Usually it's sitting right there, but I do have it, so I know who originally owned this vehicle, and uh, it was a couple out in Arkansas. So super cool to know the history on it, but... Uh, Anyway, as I mentioned, this car has undergone a partial restoration. The only piece I would say that they missed when they restored this car is the dashboard. Uh, it, it's in decent condition, but it could definitely use a little light restoration work, the dash, that is, uh, to match up with the beauty that they've done everywhere else. The interior is gorgeous. The exterior is gorgeous on this car. This bright orange, you know, finished in bright orange with the black and gray interior we'll show you here in a minute. But almost everything under here is brand new. You see the condenser for the air conditioning system. Certainly the paint, inner fenders, the firewall. You see all that wiring back there on the firewall for the ignition system and the wipers. Everything new. And the paint is excellent. I know sometimes with videos it's, it's difficult to tell, but take my word for it. This paint is an easy 9 out of 10. And the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because I don't give out 10s. Okay, so what do we have here under the hood? We've got a 440 cubic inch, 7.2 liter V8 engine. The almighty Chrysler Big Block from the late 60s. What a treat. Super awesome. It's got the old Mopar finned valve covers. Got the stock exhaust manifolds looks like an updated steering box down there brand new battery brand new radiator brand new shroud brand new clutch fan and what do we see here yes your eyes are not deceiving you i know a lot of these cars were not born with ac i'm not sure if this one was or not i don't think so but anyway it's got vintage air now it blows ice cold all new hoses and lines. See the AC was run neatly under the passenger side inner fender so that you don't have all lines going to the firewall. I love that too because it, it cleans up the firewall pretty well. You, know, you don't have that box sitting over there for the um, you know the heat uh, and the dryer and all that stuff is all hidden under the dash. And then again, like I said, they did a great job running the lines for the AC neatly, secretly through the inner fender. Really, this engine compartment is gorgeous. So it is a power steering car, as you can see right there. It has the power steering pump, and it is a manual brake car. I'll tell you, the brakes are pretty good on this car, though, for a four-wheel drum brake car without a booster. The brakes are pretty good. And I'm sure those are factory brakes. So it's got the factory drums on it but it does run, drive, and stop well. I believe that's a Roadrunner grill. That may not be a satellite grill, but I'm sure you hard-nosed Mopar guys and gals will let me know. But yeah, engine bay is gorgeous. Almost everything under here is new. Super, super slick paint in that bright orange. Which I checked for 68, I don't think Plymouth had bright orange, but they, but Dodge did. So I think this may be possibly a Dodge color, but whatever manufacturer had it, it is gorgeous. And it's got the really cool 440 hood to match. Really looks good, glass is good. Don't let me mislead you. I mean, the dash isn't in terrible condition. It's not all cracked. It's in good shape. But you'll see when we get 
when we get inside uh, what I'm talking about as far as light restoration should be uh, a possible consideration for whoever buys this vehicle. Let me get this piece of paper off here so you can see. Like I said, pin straight body. Paint looks great. All the trim is there. I don't see any rust anywhere. Inner fenders are new. Let's see if I can get you a peek under here. Inner fenders underneath, new. It's got the legendary Magnum 500 wheels, which this car definitely needs to have to complete the build. They appear to be new or fairly new. I don't see any pitting in the wheels. These are 15 inch wheels with the Uni Royal Tiger Force CTS tires. Plenty of thread. That hood is a game changer. That 440 hood, I love it. Super cool. And it is a 68, so of course it's got the privacy vent windows. They do open and close, glass is in good shape. As I mentioned before, the trim is in good shape as well. Trip rails look great. She's just a beauty. Love the long body Mopars and just that era in general. The Chevys were great too, the Dodges. Plymouths, the Fords, I like the long bodies. She's gorgeous. She is gorgeous. 1968 Plymouth Satellite. So I showed you the big block up front. Power steering, manual brakes, AC, super detailed engine bay. And that is connected to a 904 torque flight, three speed automatic transmission, and a Dana rear end. I'm not sure exactly which Dana, but it is a Dana rear end. And when they painted, they restored the entire engine. I'm sorry, the trunk. It's gorgeous. Sorry about the shadows. Uh, as you've heard me say in other videos, I will be sure to shoot still shots of every angle of the car, including the undercarriage. And those will be up on our website, carcraftclassics at gmail.com. But you can clearly see, you know, we've got a solid trunk pan here. She's gorgeous. Orders look good. Yeah, she's bad to the bone. So no real B pillar on these cars, you know, that's why they call it a hard top. A pillar up front, and usually you have a B pillar right here between the two front side window and the back side window. But if we roll those windows down, you just have one continuous opening. That's what makes it a hard top. And the most desirable body style for not only this muscle car, but most of them. Some guys do like the post, each to his own, I like the hard top. Dual exhaust, out the back, and we'll get you, like I said, check out our website, and we'll get you some pictures of the undercarriage, probably tomorrow. Bumpers are in great shape, small 
parking lights there, side lights, they work. Car's badged correctly as a satellite. Super, super cool looking 68 volt car, baby. Bumper's in great shape. Love it. All right. Let's give you a good side view of the vehicle. Since we've got the hood down, the trunk lid down. I can tell you is if you buy this vehicle you're not getting out of the gas station everybody's gonna want to talk to you and I would say this car show ready again I know I've been drooling over the paint but I can't stress that enough the gaps on this car are good the trunk lid could be lined up a little better but um, not terrible and we know a lot of the cars back in the 60s came that way from the factory but you know your gaps in your doors and your hood and everything are really really nice consistent the paint is excellent as I've mentioned she is gorgeous it looks like when they rebuilt the, the uh, 440 before they put that in there they did not install a huge cam or anything like that it's just pretty manageable factory sound coming out of this bad boy Let's see under there at those inner fenders again Really, really nice the way they disassembled the car and painted it. Now it has the factory style interior and it is in a black and charcoal gray. Gorgeous. Manual windows, manual locks. Rockers are in good shape. Interior's in really good shape. I like the black and gray combo. Nothing wrong with all black. Just getting a little tired of it, but uh, the gray and the black combination is nice. It breaks it up. It's got what appears to be new carpet. And as you can plainly see, this is a bucket seat middle console car. All right. So at first glance, Things I love about this dash is the glass or the plastic over the Speedo. It's not all cloudy. Uh, it looks like it's in good shape. The odometer is showing, let's see, 61,155 miles. I have no way to verify that. I have a title for the car, but it's marked exempt under the mileage. Gauges were working. The only one I didn't see come up was the temp gauge. So I'm not sure if it just was cold. It is winter time here right now. Or whether or not it just isn't working. Not a big deal. We can always install, you know, a set of three gauges underneath the dash. Like you see on a lot of hot rods. that will give you the, the battery information, the temp gauge, and the oil pressure. But uh, it looked like the fuel gauge was working properly. The alternator gauge was moving around. Wipers are working. Lights are working, as I mentioned. So this is what I'm talking about, about the dash needing restoration. You know, you see here the radio, the plastic over the radio. You can't hardly see through it. Looked like maybe the guy ran out of money that restored this car. Anyway, don't forget it does have vintage air, which is super nice. Middle console's in good shape. I mentioned it is a uh, torque flight automatic transmission interior overall is in really really good shape 
door panels, seat covers, carpet, headliner. Everything's in really, really good shape in here. I could get that sun glare away. There you go. So you can see it's got a nice set of the Plymouth mats. Kick panels are in good shape. Sail panels back there in good shape. As I mentioned, the headliner is in good shape as well. Dome light does work. I love it every once in a while when they paint a car, guys won't paint the door hardware. Nice surprise for a change. But you know, a few little things to button up in here. Like I said, uh, I would go to Dakota Digital and replace the whole gauge cluster with one that uh, appears to be new. I'm sorry, appears to be factory original. It'll have the same style sweep gauge from left to right. But they will all be digital gauges. So you replace them, they still appear to be old school, but the way they work, they work on a digital system and they're much more accurate and brighter and easier to see at night. And again, you still retain that factory look. Got the three spoke Mopar steering wheel. Let's love it. Super cool, 1968 baby. Oh, let's fire this baby up. pump or two there we go so again just kind of a factory sound dual exhaust runs like a top Definitely not factory original from uh, 68. They've either been re-chromed or replaced. They're in really good shape. See the gas tank under there looks new as well. And like I said, we'll get the car up in the air in a few minutes and we'll take good still shots of the undercarriage and those will be listed on my website. I'm too old to get down on the ground and show you on the video. So we'll get you some still shots, still shots so you can see the undercarriage as well. No unusual sounds coming from the engine bay. Runs nice and smooth. And I'd say, you know, if you were after, you know, a hundred thousand dollar Mopar, this is a really good start. Yes. You could replace a few things, like maybe the grill, work on that dash as I mentioned, maybe button up a few other things. And sky's the limit on these Mopars if you watch the auctions. They bring insane money. And this car, between the paint, the clean undercarriage, the actual spectacular engine bay, it's not far off from a six-digit Mopar. Okay, so again, 1968 Mopar, automatic transmission, big block 440, 7.2 liter V8. Asking price, 57.5.
57,500. For those interested, uh, we can help with financing. We work with JJ Best Bank and they can help get you financed right over the phone. It's quick and easy. They also do a free inspection on the car for you. So for out of town buyers, uh, we can get an inspection done for you through JJ Best. And hopefully you see what you're looking for here in this video. Now, shipping. We can help anywhere here in the beautiful US of A. Put this car in your driveway, don't worry about that. We have professional shippers that can help. And any kind of light customization. You know, let me know what you want to do. And we'll do our best to help you out. But the car really needs nothing but a driver. She's turnkey ready. Again, 57.5. Again, my name is Phil. Give me a holler if you have any questions or if you want to schedule a test drive, you want to get going on the financing, just let me know and we can uh, put you in touch with JJ Best. You can visit them online at jjbestbank.com or you can call directly to my rep. Just give me a holler. I'll be glad to pass this contact information on for you. 1968 Plymouth Satellite 57.5 Thank you so very much for watching. Oh, by the way, it does have a clean title. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I truly do uh, really appreciate it. Be safe out there and God bless America.